Hi, Vince Graham here with a history tour of Ion, a neighborhood my father, brother, and I have been involved with building for the past 16 years. The concept for Ion was inspired by the timeless urban patterns found in historic cities like Beaufort and Charles, along with less familiar places like Rockville and the old village of Mount Pleasant. The idea was not to duplicate, but to advance the art of building and the creation of a beautiful new place. ION received approval in 1997 thanks to the leadership of Mayor Sherwood's Woods Flower and then Mount Pleasant Town Council members Browder, Dodds, Garich, Kerr, and Tannen. They approved ION's unique zoning which included details for traffic calm street along with other urban guidelines. Without Town Council's approval for this vision, there would be no ION today. Named for Jacob von ION, a past president of the South Carolina Senate, buried in a small family cemetery on site, the neighborhood is built on 240 four acres just over the Cooper River from downtown Charleston. Bordered by Hobcaw Creek to the north and Mathis Ferry Road to the south, this is how it looked prior to construction. The Ion Company's chief role was to lead the development process. Shortly after obtaining project financing, construction began on utilities and roads. We recruited local home building contractors and formed the Ion Guild. These men and women would become our most important neighborhood building partner. Later that summer, we held ceremonial tree plantings and open houses to share the unfolding vision. We set up a sales office and continued construction on water and sewer lines, utilities, sidewalks, and roads. Architect Milton Grenfell fashioned a beautiful rendering of the land plan, and copies were given to those interested in buying homes. A supplement to the code was created to provide a more thorough understanding of vernacular design. Mackie Hill, ION's design coordinator, authored this guidebook with engaging illustrations, simple direct language, and examples of details, both the proper and improper ways to design and build them. The back cover included a price, but it's available for free today. If interested, search for the principles and download your own copy. In 298, with site work construction continuing as we prepared for the first homes to break ground. At lower right is the foundation of my brother's home, which would become Coastal Living Magazine's first idea home. The boathouse under construction, roundabout approaching completion, a bird's eye view to the southwest showing streets in the first phase of development. And at ground level, views from around East Lake. The first two home and over to Civitas Street with the square taking shape. More views along Civitas Street. The roundabout streets and parking lots around the square. Original price points in the historic district from back in the day. Turning the calendar page to 1999, this is a plaque in the first park commemorating those who built the first home. A brisk morning on East Lake, Grace Lane. The square gets another building, now home to Grace Spa and other businesses. The first Fourth of July parade. The Ion Company and Guild used to sponsor an annual award ceremony. Builders nominated trades in categories like masonry, carpentry, and landscaping. There was even an award for best gift to the street given annually. Neighbors, builders, subcontractors, and their families were invited for barbecue and to see who would win in each category. It was a celebration of talent and recognition of those building the neighborhood by throwing their hearts into their craft. Jeff and I were even coaxed onto the stage a time or two. Some claim that craftsmanship is dead, but if presented the opportunity, believe it will flourish. Here's the original dock along Hobcaw Creek. For several years running, the Trust sponsored a Charleston Symphony Orchestra concert on East Lake Field. Crossing a big threshold into 2000. Now showing the Square and Civitas Street the first tennis courts under construction at the club and looking east over the lakes and Lafayette Canal. Bob Vila came to town to film a series on a house Calman Construction built on a corner lot on Shelmore. Summertime again, the prepared site for the Creek Club 
and we turn another page. The Woody's new home on Ponsbury. And back to the square onion in the summer. The Creek Club was finished and neighbors invited for a fish fry. Into 2002 with Westlake under development. A quick backtrack to 97 to gain perspective for progress made over five year time span with homes along Civitas and Seoul Streets, the club and historic district in the foreground. Looking west over the lake, showing the rough grading of Shellmore and the newly completed amphitheater. This was taken from over the Wando Terminal with the lakes, closer view of the Creek Club, Saturday Road, and Deepwater Docks. You can also see the east end of the Marsh Walk. 10-acre linear park built along two plus miles of Ion shoreline. Another summer in the square, the site of the future bed and breakfast inn and Carter's kitchen. Ion's version of Rainbow Road designed by Neil Van Dalen and built by Marlow Chandler Construction. A view up Latitude Lane and shots of Jefferson Canal. Just north is Lafayette Canal and the famous Rialto Bridge. Marty Shulkin started work on his commercial building that fall and we marked the passing of another year. The roundabout of Perseverance Square, another bird's eye view of homes along Seoul and Ponsbury, and picturesque summer scenes. Now, lake baptisms were not something contemplated when planning Ion, but really wonderful scene. The East Coper Montessori Charter School opened its doors in the square that year, and another fall day. Into 2004, with street trees getting bigger in the historic district, and progress near the square. further north on Shellmore, showing new homes along Maybank Green. I'm certain a lot happened in 2005, but I only found this one photo of Holy Ascension's groundbreaking ceremony. So on to 2006. With the Ion Clubhouse and Main Court completed. A July 4th concert and another view from above. A little more than a year after the groundbreaking ceremony, construction began on Holy Ascension Sanctuary. Another new calendar with church construction continuing. Ground also been broken on a new school. Trident construction worked like crazy through the spring and summer, and by the start of the school year, students were out of trailers into a beautiful new building. A remarkable achievement, and the award-winning school, led by Principal Jody Swanigan, just celebrated its 10th anniversary, an innovative model to inspire other charter schools throughout the state. Meanwhile, progress continued at Holy Ascension as we passed into another new year. Low country Byzantine design at its finest. With the real estate market in free fall, I'll just skip to 2010 when Steve Degnan and Martha Morgan exemplified civic leadership by helping establish a neighborhood garden, which has become popular to the point of oversubscription. Also in 2010, Ion Assembly Board President Jody McCauley led the effort to legalize accessory dwelling units. This enabled homeowners to rent garage apartments, earning extra income while providing more affordable housing options. 450 square foot apartment is known as the Governor's Mansion as it recently served as the home of South Carolina's former governor, returned as Congressman Mark Sanford. The home of Carol and David Williams who moved here in late 1998. When their children grew up, David and Carol rented the home and moved into their 580 square foot garage apartment behind. 
end of 2011, money was donated to Holy Ascension, allowing the church to commission famed iconographers to paint the apse. The long-term vision is to adorn all the interior walls with these beautiful paintings. Also in 2011, former Assembly Board President Kershaw LeClaire led the effort to bury the power lines along scenic Mathis Ferry Road, so no more pruning oak branches away from wires. Construction work began this year which will allow the tree canopy to grow and flourish. It will eventually look something like this. Thanks to all who helped make this happen. To recap some before and after shots to show what can happen in a relatively short amount of time and that it is possible to build in a manner worthy of passing on to future generations. On behalf of the thousands of people who have worked these 16 years to build the neighborhood, thanks for taking time to watch, and here's to even more positive change in the future.